All right, what's going on, guys? I'm going to do a quick breakdown for the week of, on GBP, JPY. <clears throat> All right, what's going on, guys? I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> All right, guys, what's going on? I'm going to go ahead and do a quick breakdown for you guys for the week on the pound versus the yen. Uh, this is the the pair I like to trade the most other than US 30 and NAS 100. So we're going to be looking for trades that we can potentially scalp slash intraday, but we're going to start from the daily time frame and work our way all the way down to the five minute to see what the best opportunities will be. So I'll go ahead and delete everything and start from scratch. So as you can see here from the daily, we've been uptrending for forever. And that means we've been creating a series of higher highs and higher lows, as you can see. And currently the last major high, which was here was broken here. Even though we had a big down movement to take out all the buyers right here, we still held the daily bullish trend. So we're gonna continue our bullish bias for the week. So when we drop down to the four hour, we can kind of see a minor trend within that uptrend where you have this low here, creating a series of higher highs and higher lows. And then it looks like this low was potentially broken here, which means that it might come down to attack this low and maybe double bottom or break and, con and continue the downtrend. But for now, like I said, we're going to be looking for long positions because we don't want to go against our higher time frame bias. And what we could be seeing here is just a triple bottom on the four hour time frame. One, two, three, which if this is going to hold this support, we can see here. It was a resistance right here. It was kind of a resistance here. It was this. It was the point. It was the order block here that caused this big sell off here. So this is a very major, major level of support and resistance. In this case, it is support. So we're going to keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and run a Fibonacci retracement from the previous low to the next high, so that we can see that it's really respecting the golden zone in this trend or in this uh, impulsive move here. So the fact that we have a lot of indecision candles on a higher time frame within the golden zone, it's respecting the support or that was once resistance here. Then we can now start to look for um, areas of reversal to get in for long positions on a smaller time frame. So let's jump down to the hour. In the hour, we can see that we had a nice clean head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders off of that support. So that gives us more bias that we might be seeing a reversal to start coming in and uh, breaking this minor downtrend. We've had a series of lows being broken Here, here, here. So you can see that it's just not liking any, it's not liking any of this price within this range to reverse off of. And the reason that it really dumped is because you can see here this large wick that needed to be filled. A lot of inefficiency within this wick. And so one tip you can always remember is that wicks like to fill with momentum. So you can see we have the momentum to the downside. So we could have been looking for opportunities for retracements within this downtrend to then take profit at the fill of this, of this wick over here. But that's past tense. So that's just a teaching little lesson right there, but we're going to see what we can look for, for long positions to possibly start filling some of this downtrend back up and continue the uptrend on the higher time frame. So we have our floor set here. We'll probably look for sell opportunities below this zone, but until, but we're going to be looking for opportunities to look for long positions within this little range here. When we break it down on a smaller time frame, and you'll see why in a second. So let's jump to a 15 minute chart. We'll zoom in on everything. 
And now what we're really seeing here is, yes, it was an inverse head and shoulders, an ugly one, but it's also a, a Wyckoff schematic where we're seeing a lot of um, buyers and seller ind indecision happening here. Price is coiling up, and that's why we see a pop to the upside right here because once price is coiled too tightly, you already know that our consolidating price has to break one way or the other. In this case, because we held the strong support level, price decided to move away from it. And now what we're looking for is opportunities to fill order blocks that were left behind from this down move. So what I mean by that is here, I highlight this bullish candle before this dramatic drop to the downside that broke the previous structure. Here's structure as it made a lower high, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then price broke that previous low, which is structure and then dropped dramatically. So this is an area that we could see a reversal potentially happen. So we're gonna look for that area to target. We'll highlight that in red because this is gonna be a potential sell zone. And then we have another one up here that also started that, that big move down. So it could reject off of this one or this one. And we'll just have to assess those zones once price gets to it and see what the price action gives us. But until then, we're looking to continue this uptrend because as you can see here, we had price downtrending, downtrending, hit support, um, retrace a bit, come back down, reject again, retrace a bit, come back down, reject again. And then all of a sudden we started forming higher highs and higher lows. So we have a low here, high, low here, higher high. And then it came back down, but it didn't break previous structure. So it held structure here. And then all of a sudden it broke this structure to the upside. So now we can say that this short term uptrend wants to continue before it wants to continue the higher time frame downtrend because the markets are fractal. So just because it may be trending on a higher time frame to the upside doesn't mean that it's not downtrending on a smaller time frame, as you can see right now. So we have higher time frame downtrend, which is like an hourly time frame downtrend but then a four hour uptrend that is being respected. So we always respect the higher time frame bias. So we're, we have the rejection here, um, solidifying the higher time frame uptrend. So that's why we are looking for long positions. So now if we drop to the five minute chart, we can kind of dissect and look for order blocks to reject off of to keep continuing to the upside. So like I said, we had Price break structure here, breaking this previous high, and then it retraced, reject within here, and then just started moving to the upside. So what was the next structure that was broken? Well, I can see here was the next high, and then price broke structure here. So now I'm going to run a Fibonacci from the low to the high, of this current five minute swing. And we're gonna see within the golden zone between the 50% and the 61.8% is this little white candle that was the order block, the down movement that caused the spike to the upside that broke previous structure, just like I was explaining um, before. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight that little box. That's gonna be blue for buys. And then we're also gonna label this one down here because we can see that this was a little down candle before the big move up, just like how we saw up in here. So we're gonna wait for price to come to those zones before we actually take a position and see if price gives us some rejection candles off those zones. Now, one way that this is a trick that I learned to start identifying which of these little blocks are the correct order blocks. You're never 100% right all the time, but to make sure that you're right most of the time, I like to bring up the volume indicator because 
What causes a big move to happen in the markets is simply money being poured into the markets or money being pulled out of the markets. So in this case, money was poured into the dollar or into the pound, which caused an increase in value, and that's why it shot up. And <clears throat> so now what we're seeing is big volume go in at these order blocks, go in, and then hesitation, and then in again, and now we can see that on the volume where we had this little order block, we had a lot of red tall spikes here, which means a lot of bearish volume entered the market, but we didn't see a lot of bearish movement. So that means you can kind of think about it like, um, I don't know, there's like, there's a lot of pressure built up into it. And the only way to release the pressure is for price to come back into it and, unlock the key to release it. And then usually what will happen is price will come, enter the key into the lock, explode off of it or break through it, come to this one and same deal. So that's what we're kind of looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. We know that this order block is within the golden zone. So we'll highlight that in yellow. This is uh, just a deeper retracement, but it's nice that it's um, right within this consolidation range right in the middle so price definitely could come and reject off of that and then other than that price down here seems pretty clean so the only i wouldn't be looking for any long positions within this range here however if price decides to come back all the way down to where it triple bottomed then maybe we could look for another long position down here So three potential buy positions. And one potential sell position. Although we will be selling off of these zones too, probably. So keep that in mind. So like I was saying, we had a big spike in volume where this order block happened to be. So that means that I might, because because this one right here, we don't see a big spike in volume. You see, this is a smaller um, candle than these bullish ones here. So price might not reject here. I might just go ahead and even if it rejects, so what? I might just get rid of that and give myself a higher probability opportunity that way I don't take one loss and then one win where I could just make sure I take a nice win or a very small loss. Because what's nice about identifying these order blocks is they're supposed to reject or they're supposed to reverse because like I was saying, there's so much pressure from the volume leaving it that needs to come be filled. And that might not, that's not the correct terminology for trading. I'm just giving a metaphor kind of, but we know that price wants to reject off of these little areas so we can, when we take a long position, we can have our entry right at the top of the order block. I like to use the top wick and we can put our stop loss below the order block. So this is only a 10 pip stop loss and we're going to be targeting this area up here, 148 pips. That's a 13 to one risk forward ratio. So a lot of potential for account growth off of this trade. And same situation here, where we would target this zone, stop loss below the lows, below everything. <clears throat> because if, if price decides to break through here, then we're just automatically switching our bias to, to being a, a bear in this situation. But because we're holding the bullish bias, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our stop loss is tight and our reward is big and just keep in mind too this is the five minute chart so this is when we zoom back out if price wants to hold the uptrend and come attack new highs on the hourly this trade could potentially run for 590 pips but we also 
while well, let's say we got in on on this trade and then all of a sudden we come through here price does not reject and comes up to here price does not reject and then it starts breaking through well now we got to start looking at this area on the lower time frames and look for other potential reversal areas like for example this looks like a potential reversal area and when we jump to the 15 minute chart let's take a look we can see that we had a nice bullish candle before the drop that broke previous structure right here. Broke structure here. This was the candle that made it happen. So we could even narrow it down a little bit more like that. And price will most likely wanna do some sort of reaction off of this, whether it be a complete reversal to continue the downtrend, like price coming up to here like this and then automatically reversing or price could do this and then just continue this uptrend and come attack the previous highs. So we always just want to identify these order blocks and respect them, especially on the higher time frames. And then once price gets to them, you look for um, good price action to show you that it is a good idea to get in. And I like to set alerts by right clicking right above or below the zones, add alert, create. And now I don't have to constantly be looking at price. I can wait for this alert to go off and then come assess. So I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. But that is my outlook for GJ for this week. Thanks, guys.